By 2016, Rory McDonald had become the face of Canadian MMA. An elite mix of striking and grappling, and fresh off of one of the greatest fights in the sport's history. With his stock at an all-time high, McDonald made a big money move to Bellator, where early promise gave way to one of the most bizarre and underwhelming tenures of all time. Welcome to the INC, and this is the story of Rory McDonald in Bellator. On October 15, 2005, a 16-year-old Rory McDonald competed for the EFC promotion in Prince George, Canada. After testing the waters with several sports during his childhood, McDonald first began training MMA at the age of 14, originally out of his local gym in British Columbia, before attracting the attention of coach Farah Zahabi, the man responsible for George St. Pierre's rise in prominence in the late 2000s. Backed by one of the sport's best minds, McDonald began making an impact north of the border, winning the King of the Cage Canadian title before upgrading to world gold in 2008. McDonald quickly amassed a 9-0 record against solid opposition, and when the UFC announced their first event in Canada, McDonald became one of the company's youngest ever signings, suffering his first career loss to former WEC champion Carlos Condit. McDonald, however, would bounce back in style, winning eight of his next nine fights and displaying a maturity and well-rounded skill set far beyond his 25 years. McDonald's run also saw him beat some of welterweight's biggest stars, including wins over Nate Diaz, future champion Tyron Woodley, and MMA legend BJ Penn. McDonald's career reached its pinnacle in 2015, when he took on welterweight champion Robbie Lawler at UFC 189. The fight came to be known as one of the greatest in MMA history, with Lawler and McDonald bludgeoning one another over 25 minutes. McDonald had gotten the upper hand over the first four rounds, and seemingly on course to claiming the title, before the accumulation of strikes proved far too great entering the final round. While the match had earned McDonald a new batch of fans, it was far from smooth sailing behind the scenes, as McDonald was soon at loggerheads with the UFC over a new contract. McDonald admitted his focus had become more financial in the aftermath of the Lawler bout. And when UFC bosses failed to reach his demands, McDonald expressed interest in testing free agency. I want to make the most money I can. I, I did a lot of favors, I felt like, for the UFC, and, and it didn't, I don't think it got, you know, returned. So now it's all about making money. And whoever wants to pay me the most is where I'll go. McDonald finally entered the market after a loss to Stephen Thompson at Fight Night Ottawa, and it didn't take long for suitors to come knocking at the Red King's door. After turning down an offer from Korea's Road FC, McDonald agreed to a multi-year deal with Bellator that August, being formally announced as a company fighter at the Bellator 160 press conference. Critics were divided on the decision. While Bellator had signed a number of free agents over the past 12 months, few had the same impact as McDonald with some going as far as to suggest the Canadian would fundamentally change the MMA market. Others, however, were more skeptical, believing McDonald's reported $400,000 fight purse was too much for a fighter of his standing, as well as doubts over whether McDonald was the same fighter following his war with Lawler. The Red King made his debut against fellow exile Paul Daly at Bellator 179. With his opponent known for his one-shot power, McDonald took no chances against Daly, taking the fight to the ground early and happy to neutralize the Brit over the first five minutes. The Red King's wrestling proved too much for Daly come the start of the second round, securing a rear naked choke and becoming the first man to submit the British fighter since 2008. This is getting more and more impressive. Bye bye. He got it. The fight proved McDonald was a step above Bellator's other welterweight contenders and a match with recrowned champion Douglas Lima was soon in the works. The highly anticipated bout was set as the first main event of the company's new TV deal with Paramount, only to be bumped last minute for Rampage Jackson's bout with Chael Sonnen, a damning symbol of Bellator's business approach at the time. While the fight wasn't the five-star classic many expected, it still proved hard-hitting, as Lima mangled McDonald's shin with low kicks throughout the fight. McDonald later admitting the damage sustained from his opponent was some of the most painful of his entire career. Despite barely being able to walk, McDonald used a grappling heavy game to dull Lima's striking, going on to claim a unanimous decision and the Brazilian's title in the process. 
By this point, McDonald's gamble to leave the UFC had seemingly paid off, finally claiming major MMA gold and overcoming major adversity to do so. With welterweight widely considered Bellator's strongest weight class, McDonald faced the prospect of further top challengers to raise his stock even higher. Instead, McDonald decided to pull a Conor McGregor and took on middleweight champion Gegard Mousasi in a champ champ super clash at Bellator 206. While McDonald expressed interest in becoming a two weight champion after signing with the promotion, many raised doubts over his decision with McDonald having never fought at 185 during his entire combat career. Meanwhile, Musasi was riding an eight-fight winning streak and had previously fought as high as heavyweight. The skeptics were proven right, as McDonald had little answer to Musasi's power before a failed Imanari roll left him in bottom position. With size and grappling on his side, the ever-clinical Musasi didn't need asking twice. While fans wrote off the fight as a failed experiment, McDonald took the loss to heart, stating he regretted taking the fight and choosing to take an extended break from the sport to assess his options. During this time, McDonald and his wife became born-again Christians, recommitting his dedication to the faith following the birth of his second child. While the move was innocuous at the time, many later cited it as the turning point of McDonald's career. Following the success of its heavyweight tournament, Bellator decided to capitalize by pitting its eight top welterweights in a Grand Prix tournament, leaving McDonald with the prospect of defending his title three times in six months. The tourney also saw McDonald face his toughest test yet, trying to get an exciting fight out of human blanket, John Fitch. Most expected McDonald to make easy work of Fitch. Instead, the Canadian spent minute after minute taking the wrestler's ground and pound, including a 10-8 during a one-sided third round. McDonald's work in the stand-up was enough to secure a majority draw, and as per the tournament's rules, the champ was allowed to retain his belt and advance to the semifinal. It was McDonald's comments after the fight, however, that got most fans talking. It, it, it takes a certain spirit to come in here and, and put, a man, uh, put a man through pain and stuff. And... I just don't, I don't know if I have that, that, same, that same drive to hurt people anymore. McDonald's comments immediately raised red flags. While the fighter had been vocal about changes in his personal life, many felt it caused the Red King to lose his killer instinct, with Bellator even going as far as to make contingency plans should McDonald retire from the sport. While the Red King eventually returned to action, it wouldn't be the same man who pushed Robbie Lawler to the brink back in 2015. McDonald's return came against unbeaten Neiman Gracie at Bellator 222. While McDonald's performance was much improved, neutralizing Gracie's submission game with his wrestling, it did little to answer those questions of the fighter's motivation going into the fight. Those fears were also felt by Bellator's top brass, with the company unwilling to provide an extension to McDonald's six-fight contract. Win or lose, it appeared McDonald's fight in the Grand Prix Final would be his last for the promotion. Rory McDonald's final fight came at Bellator 232 against Douglas Lima, the man McDonald had beaten to start his reign 20 months earlier. Fans questioned how Bellator would handle the fallout of McDonald potentially leaving with the title, but Lima gave them no reason to worry, stuffing all of McDonald's takedown attempts while piecing him up with jabs and low kicks. The Red King had been dethroned in the most emphatic fashion. McDonald was formally released from his contract, having amassed a 4-2 record, with the fighter expressing surprise that Bellator didn't campaign harder to sign the fighter to a new deal. Scott Coker's response proved particularly telling, wishing McDonald the best for his future endeavors and stating that if there was a fighter the company wanted to keep, they would do their hardest to do so. McDonald's Bellator run can only be seen as underwhelming. While his first two fights showed signs of promise, the fighter's mileage and lack of motivation soon became evident, with McDonald appearing washed despite still being in his late 20s. While most point to his faith as a factor in his downfall, it was a part of a wider change in circumstance, the world-aware family man being a far cry from the brash upstart of the UFC. In this case, Bellator were victims of signing a fighter unaware that he was damaged goods. They wouldn't, however, be the last promotion to try wringing some life out of the Red King. 
This is the INC. Please like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell so you never miss a video.